So this is the second episode of my podcast where I go to people and talk to them. <laughs> Today with me is Christopher and Marcus. Hello. Hi. Hello, hello. So guys, perhaps you could introduce yourself, Christopher. Uh, yes, um, I'm Christopher. I'm 32 something. <laughs> <laughs> A game collector from Sweden. Um I live in Gothenburg, and uh, I have a lot of games. <laughs> have you always lived in Gothenburg, or are you from somewhere else? No, I have uh, always lived here. Okay, great. And you, Marcus? Yes, I'm. Yeah, I'm 34 and six months. <laughs> 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 uh, yes, uh, and I, I'm not. Grown, grown up here, uh, but I'm I'm from a small village in a small land in Swedish, um, and I have lived in Göteborg now for 13 years, maybe. Okay, cool. And yeah, I'm also um, yeah, I'm an an hoarder uh, of <laughs> a lot of stuff, <laughs> yeah, not just games. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, the topic of this podcast is retro games we will be talking about everything around it but first uh, what are you guys working with um yeah uh, i am i'm working as an it consultant Ooh. you know <laughs> computers <laughs> and then people don't then people stop asking questions after they hear that <laughs> but um, i guess that's enough but yeah. uh, You and me, we worked at Pelagico before, yep. and uh, you left uh, like half a year ago to yep. do some new stuff. What what is it? Um, so in essence, I'm um, a consultant uh, on Atlassian services like Jira, uh, Confluence, Hipchat, Bitbucket, Bamboo. That sort of those applications. Um, what are they for? Sorry. What are they for? The applications. Yes. Um, so Jira is the m most well-known, I guess. It's mm -hmm. an issue tracker. Uh, so th these are applications that support software development companies oh, so, uh, so. in various ways. So business-to-business -business stuff. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And you, Marcus? Yes. Um, when I were uh, in school and educated educated uh, what's say education my education yep. um, is a graphic designer and I have worked with that for um, uh, in a professional way for eight years mm -hmm. and uh, for different uh, advertising agencies and um, but after eight years I were I was a little bit tired okay. to just it was pretty the same thing every day for me and uh, isn't it always <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe <laughs> work is work exactly <laughs> uh, you go up when you work yeah mm. yeah but uh, I I have for uh, many years I have thought about to start uh, my own business oh, okay and uh, a little dream have uh, has always uh, been to have a, a small shop Or a, yeah, it, it ha doesn't have to be small, but the shop. <laughs> a, a, a real shop? Or yeah, a real shop when you can come in as a own. customer and just uh, hold stuff and buy them and uh, look at them. And no, not just as many people do today. They, they click on a website and buy stuff from a web shop. Mm. It, it can be cool too but uh, I like the feeling when you go into a store and you can uh, feel the atmosphere and really yeah uh, feel the, mm -hmm. everything so um, I think so do you have a store now yeah <laughs> Or is it I, still a, a dream <laughs> yeah, I I have thought about it for many years as I said and uh, for a one year some something I uh, started uh, to plan this shop And I, I were looking a lot of after um, a place to have it, and um, I, I, I did find a place, and mm -hmm. then I started in December, and it's a it's a retro store, with okay. uh, yeah, with uh, I have a lot of video games or 
is a part of the story is uh, a sec- selection of video games and then I have uh, other retro stuff like furniture and lights and uh, oh, I see, I see. cool things that are unique and uh, yeah have a cool shape or color or is it a second hand or first yeah it's hand? a second hand ah, it's second hand so nice. uh, but it's like um, selected second hand it's yeah not, I pick, it's not like a flea market but it's it's the I, it's yeah it's more uh, i pick up f- uh, items that i really like myself yeah so that and which have style or something yeah like. exactly so uh, it it can be uh, both video games. It can be um, a good vinyl record or uh, a cool light or mm-hmm. other cool nostalgic things. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's really cool. And yeah, I'm proud that I have done it uh, now for six months, and I can make my living. Uh, oh, that's great. It, yeah, it's 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 hard. It's tough, and I work a lot. Yeah, but I I work with something that I have started myself, and uh, I'm I am my own boss, and that's a good yeah. feeling. Yeah. That's absolutely. Mm. So, what is it called? Huh? What is it called? Uh, the name is Macapar. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> and, one. And uh, for yeah, uh, uh, the the listeners that can't speak or understand Swedish. The word makapar is a word for a thing, an item, uh, when you don't know the name of it. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, like, like a gadget. Yeah, or yeah exactly. Thingy, yeah. Like a gadget and... Uh, or a thingy. Thingy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Bob. It's, it's a good name for a lot of items that you don't really know the name of. Ah, yeah. I see. I see. Cool. Mm. Yep. <laughs> So you said half of the stuff is like retro games or something mm-hmm. like that? Yep. Uh. Yeah, uh, because I have been collecting video games for uh, many years now. It's uh, I started 1998, mm-hmm. so it's almost 20 years soon. Jesus. So, oh, yeah, it's 30, pretty long time. You are 34 years old? So. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a long time. Yeah, uh, and uh, it was natural for me to have a, a section in the store uh, with uh, video games. Yeah. Um, so yeah, because it's a so big uh, part of my life and yeah. Uh, yeah. my uh, everyday. So yeah, it feels good to have it. So and a lot of customers also like it. So it's yeah, yeah, it's a win-win. <laughs> That's great. So what's then your favorite of the games you have in in your store? In the store? Uh, I have to say the Vectrix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cool. Uh, the Vectrix is a really cool system. It's one of the first uh, home consoles. Okay. Uh, it was um, it came 1982. It was Milton Bradley that uh, developed it mm-hmm. and it's a game the the, the console and the TV is uh, built together. It's uh, yeah, built in. But it's, it's not an arcade. No, it's not an arcade machine. It's more a home console. Oh, okay. uh, but the reasoning was sort of now you can bring your uh, arcade the arcade home. <laughs> so the, 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 the television set is is integrated with a so, so you actually it, it, it it's um, the size of a small. Ah. television uh, yeah you, you put the cartridges in it yeah you can really see if you look at the vectrix the, the, the design is uh, with a lot of ins- inspiration inspiration of uh, an arcade machine okay yeah. uh, and uh, the joystick and everything is also so it's yeah, yeah but you put it on your on your table yeah you, yeah okay and then uh, one of the coolest thing with Ve- vectrix is that you have a because the the screen is black and white, it's monochrome. Okay. Uh, and, how, how old is it? Uh, Thirty four years old. <laughs> oh, Jesus. So it's, yeah, it's pretty old. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty old. <laughs> uh, and um, in the beginning of um, the eighties, it was not the the, the, the first uh, home consoles were black and white, oh. and also Vectrex was it. But they 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 did something cool. They had. Uh, this plastic overlays okay. that you put on the front of the TV 
to yes. get the color. Ah. So you use different overlays for different games to uh, change oh, the, see, see. So, so the layout of the game and like, the color. Like mm. a green game and then a yeah. red yeah. game and stuff yeah. like this. Ah, yeah. So it's half transparent. But the, the thing is also with the Vectrix, it's a, it's a vector monitor. So um, oh, I see. So pixel based, but vector based. Okay. Exactly. So it gives a really smooth uh, look and feel. Yeah. Uh, it's it's difficult for them to make uh, small details. Yeah. Uh, but um, uh, sh- uh, there's an asteroids clone that is called uh, Mindstorm. That is, uh, I think, it's built into the machine. Yes. Okay. Um, so that, that looks like the game Asteroids that Atari released uh, earlier. I see. Yeah. And um, that is well suited for yeah, for a vector yeah. monitor, but um, so there were uh, definitely some uh, color video games mm-hmm. for. Um, but the, you always had one color, or how did? Yeah, so these so, no, so the, like for instance the Atari two thousand six hundred, or yeah. uh, also known as the Atari video computer system. Um, what that uh, had colors in the game and that was released in uh, late 76 or early 77 but that's uh, pixel based and okay yeah. I, I i don't i think it would have been too expensive to have a color vector monitor for the yeah. uh, vectrex so they solved it with uh, the the plastic overlays that uh, marcus mentioned and that's uh, ah. creative <laughs> <laughs> that uh, sure is and it yeah. looks really cool uh, so sometimes i just have it I, I just put it on in the evening mm-hmm. because it's so nice lights from ah. it. So the colors and everything you can have it on demo yeah. on demo play and it looks like a light in nice. the corner nice. in the nice. in the apartment so it's really cool and i just want to say one more thing about vectrix it's really still alive because it's uh, a lot of people um still doing games for it it's oh, a really okay. cool uh, so you can program it how do you do that i don't know the how you do it uh, in the te- the technical mm-hmm. thing but uh, there are a, a great scene for uh, d- still de- developing games for the console cool. and that's really cool yeah yeah so there's it's a there's a homebrew scene yeah for electrics definitely it, actually, it is for for most of these old uh, video games. Yeah, There's, it's really uh, cool. Home, homebrew scenes. It's some revenge <laughs> <laughs> or something. Because <laughs> yeah. back then, as yeah, a child, the, you didn't yeah, have the, the money. It's cool <laughs> because the companies have um, uh, they have uh, what do you say? They f- f- finished making games for yeah. a, lo- a, lo- a lot of years, and it's. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. dying scene, but uh, it's so cool that the fans and uh, so many people are want to keep them alive mm. and uh, still, or yeah, do doing games for mm. the consoles. Absolutely. Yeah, for some platforms, you can actually there are people that make a living of just selling the the kits, so you can make your own I games. Uh, I have one lying around here. It's um, it's a, a flash device for NES uh, okay, cartridges. Just shortly describe how it looks for <laughs> listeners. <laughs> As, it's a small PCB with uh, three connectors. Um, that's for um, uh, the, the Famicom uh, version of the NES. NES is that's uh, Nintendo Entertainment System. Mm-hmm. Them, their eight-bit console. Um, the Famicom version of it, released in Japan, had uh, uh, sixty pins. Um, Mm-hmm. And um, this uh, this device it has inputs for uh, Famicom uh, and NES that is seventy two pins and also for SNES the sixteen bit uh, console from oh. Nintendo. And then there's a USB, USB <laughs> contact on the That's end. That's a of new it. one. <laughs> so basically, and then you could just put your you buy these uh, cartridges ah, okay, uh, that can be flashed they, using oh, this. Okay. So, and then you take the cartridge and put it into the game. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So, so I mean, these things have been developed by the fans. Yeah. And um, people make a living of it. So that says something about how big the homebrew scene is. If you can, uh, yeah, make a living of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're sitting here in 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 your home, Christopher, and we're sitting in in a special room, kind of, where you have all your 
stuff which has to do with <laughs> with the retro games uh, or a majority of the stuff <laughs> <laughs> okay. but uh, just to ask you the same question as uh, Marcus what's your favorite game here in this room um, my favorite in this room uh, is uh, it's a difficult question but um, <laughs> I'm I'm looking towards an, an arcade machine here. Um, the Pac-Man original up, upright uh, oh, arcade yeah. machine from 1980. For me, this is um, it's it's first of all, it's still a good game. Yeah. It's a game that have aged very well. Yeah. But it's also so iconic for the entire industry. That is true. The, the, Basically, yeah, everyone knows Pac-Man. So yeah. <laughs> I, the Space Invaders arcade, it's um, it's also iconic, but it's not as f- it hasn't aged as well. Mm. The game isn't as fun as Pac Man, so I I would say I would say Pac Man. And it's a full arcade, so it's, do you pay yourself or how do you play it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, yes, there is a uh, it's called a coin mech that uh, mm. you put in. Uh, coins. Yes. Uh, it's currently set to um, S- Swedish five kroner coins. Ah, so you, you can choose yourself, or how does it work? Yeah, they're they are configurable, but it's uh, quite a hassle. So th- what you usually do is that you, uh, because it's just a very simple um, micro switch. Yeah. So you, you could just add a button that uh, okay. f- uh, <laughs> does the same thing as uh, uh, adding a coin. Ah, okay, okay. So it's a, like. Just just uh, a circuit which you closed. And yeah, but I keep a um, a jar of coins uh, mm. f- because when um, some friends when they have their kids over, I, I think it's fun for them to absolutely yeah. to try to put the coin in and realize that you can't you couldn't play for how long as you wanted it. It yeah. cost you a lot of money. So <laughs> it's a good uh, from yeah. a, a learning <laughs> absolutely <laughs> because today the kids just press the button on the iPhone or the iPad and then can play as much as you want. Yeah, I mean uh, uh, compared to some some modern games where you, it's very almost difficult to die or they're very yeah. you're being excused all the time because if you die you get to start over at the exact same point and you can just yeah. continue here you, you uh, there were no possibility of saving your <laughs> no. progress or anything you just Absolutely. add more coins i remember when i had my amiga when i was like 10 or something i n- i i wasn't able to to play through any of those games because they were so hard and you always started at the beginning so there was no save or nothing mm-hmm. and it was so frustrating but still super super much fun yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> So let's talk about the history of uh, of those video games. Uh, do you guys know when the first uh, like game or like computer game has been uh, developed? So um, <clears throat> well, there 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 has been there have been arcades uh, for a long time, uh, but they. Um, in the beginning, uh, there were a lot of like a shooting uh, range where you shot the uh, air, uh, air gun towards a uh, plastic duck and that sort of things. And um, there were a lot of uh, weird, just mechanical or electromechanical oh, games. Um, pinball games uh, started out like that in I don't know when, but. Yeah, I think a lot earlier, but not maybe electromechanical in the beginning. But ah, oh, so so you okay, okay, but but they were More. quite early, and um, but the like, like a real video game that has a screen, a screen and a, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, it's uh, at some point in the sixties, uh, I believe it was when um, these early. Um, uh, games were uh, developed at MIT on a huge, large computer. Yeah, and then, but the first uh, one that was actually c- commercially available, uh, mm-hmm. it's the um, called Computer Space. Uh, yeah. So that's 
also almost like an asteroid kind of game. You you shoot uh, flying saucers from a ship, and that's um, uh, when was when was that released? Seventy one, I think, and that's an arcade machine. So it's a full size uh, cabinet okay. um, so. with a black and white television set in it, and yeah. Yeah, and it's really beautiful design of it of the arcade cabinet because yeah. it's so. If you, uh, yeah, if you Google it, just Google computer space. It's so retro, fu- fu- what do you say, futuristic fu- yeah. Yeah. Uh, design. It's uh, it's like uh, something in an old uh, sci-fi movie. Mm. Uh, it's really a cool design of the of the cabinet. So were those first video games? Only arcade, or how how did it work? Or what kind of games? It, are it didn't basically? take that long for the home uh, consoles to arrive. Uh, I mean, this was in late seventy one, I think. I'm mm-hmm. sorry if I'm getting the facts <laughs> wrong here, but <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in already in seventy two, the um, the Magnavox Odyssey uh, was released, which was a home console uh, yeah. developed by a guy called Ralph Bayer. But a home console uh, is it like you put, you put it into your uh, TV and then play it or how? Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that was a very very simple thing. It was actually uh, it came out earlier than the the Pong because Pong is usually uh, credited as the first home video game. But yeah. that was uh, in '74, I think. Okay. The home Pong, or. You remember? I don't oh. really remember the year, but somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, but it it sort of looked like it, but uh, I think Pong was a much more well-made mm-hmm. game than yeah, the yeah. Magnavox Odyssey. Mm-hmm. But the, it's um, so. What was the 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 Magna Magnavox Odyssey? Okay. So, so what was it about? So what was so the game? It was actually a a, a kit with um, I think you got. Uh, 12 cartridges or something mm-hmm. or was it 6 with it when you bought it so um, uh, one was games. tennis one was hockey one ah, was, see, uh, but they all almost look the same, look the same. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and again it, it actually used the, um, the same um, idea as the Vectrex it had these plastic overlays mm-hmm. that you put uh, you taped them uh, onto your television okay. uh, screen yeah. uh, and you got <laughs> the different um, but everyone has a different size of a television, or was well, all televisions. No. Uh, so what you got in the package was for large television sets and I small. Okay. So <laughs> I think, like, I, w- I don't know what how large a large television was in seventy two, but probably maybe probably not sixty inch. <laughs> probably more around. 26 <laughs> maybe um, i don't know <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so so there are like those arcades consoles i guess pc games kind of like the atari is it a pc i guess it's a pc no, um so or Ar- atari, Ataris, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah so uh, atari they they also did arcade games okay the the, the most uh, oh, f- uh, the earliest one was the the pong Okay, uh, that was an Atari game. Yeah. Oh, cool. And um, then they d- also did the home version of Pong. Ah. And uh, then they released uh, consoles, cartridge-based uh, consoles. So, um, so they were a game company from the beginning, or was yep. what did? Yeah, they did um, amusement. Uh, things <laughs> interesting i didn't know that <laughs> uh so i'm i mean they they did pinballs as well i believe um or maybe not okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, home computers yeah and later on they went they went yeah. on to, uh, uh in the early 80s they yeah. uh, they um uh, joined the the the, the wave of uh, home computers yeah. but uh, those weren't really uh, what you would say a PC they were often uh, their own kind. but they still had like an office package and everything so people worked with it uh, they? yeah yeah, yeah um, at, at some point yeah, I guess they started uh, having uh, those uh, office suites ah, uh, okay. with them as well interesting uh, <laughs> so the other way around the, um, the sort of like an um, uh, Amiga or um, or uh, yeah, Commodore. Yeah, yeah. Cool. What about emulation? 
is does it tie in into here into retro games or because I guess most of the younger people if they play some some older game then they play it emulated I would almost say mm, probably most of them do uh, but it's really fun because uh, I, I see when in my store uh, sometimes uh, really young uh, kids are mm -hmm. coming in and uh, they have uh, uh, old um, consoles home okay and uh, they haven't grown up with them they have just uh, uh, yeah they they have uh, like gotten it from their parents or something yeah or some older brother or sister maybe but it's so cool that they they are can enjoy the old games even if it's not uh, an fps game or uh, coolest graphic the latest graphic so what is what is can enjoy what what uh, that they can um, um oh, can enjoy okay yeah yeah, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> um, so some some of the younger peop uh, people people uh, um can uh, appreciate uh, yeah. it uh, even if, if even if it's not the, <laughs> the latest game mm. and yeah uh, just last week it was two guys that were in maybe 16 mm -hmm. years old and they bought uh, uh, games for um, for Super Nintendo so that was cool Hmm. okay but uh, I guess um, so the question on emulation um there's of course um, it, it's also it's not only like a way of playing games without paying for them you can also mm -hmm. use virtual console on the Wii and or other um, uh, channels where you can actually buy old uh, retro games and play so, them emulated so you buy those retro games like from uh, are those new games games or are those like uh, second hand used games uh, for instance the Wii Nintendo Wii yeah. it has a like a virtual console concept so you can oh, so you can pay for them oh, online and see. then uh, so, play so them on still, your Wii you, you still pay like Nintendo yeah. for the games so Nintendo still makes money okay yeah. I see but uh, I mean the the emulation it, it it gets a lot of people into the hobby I think mm -hmm. uh, which is nice um, I usually don't play emulated games. I mean, you have enough here which are <laughs> real games. So. <laughs> yeah, but there's also like these flash cartridges for, um, for, uh, for instance, Super Nintendo or Sega Mega Drive, where you can just add an SD card and then you can play it on the original hardware. Ah, um, okay. But you can on the SD card you can put all the ROMs you need. Yeah. Yeah. I, I heard about this retro pie uh, distribution for for the Raspberry Pi, where you just uh, download it and then you suddenly have uh, like a lot of retro games and you can play them on your on your TV basically. It's the, that's the emulation stuff also, isn't it? Yeah, so that's uh, it's basically an image that already has a lot of these. Um, like all the emulators you need and then you mm -hmm. just need to add your roms oh so you still so, need to get the the games from somewhere i'm guessing they're not bundled i haven't tried the uh, i Fi, think but, they, yeah. they can't sell them like that because it's not uh, legal to do it yeah. they can just sell the hardware yeah and then it's up to everyone to yeah if it if you want to mm. Download think, rooms. It's up to you. Uh, up to you. Yeah. Okay. The RetroPie project is. Uh, I mean, the image uh, is uh, free, but uh, I don't think they want any legal <laughs> problems, oh, so they yeah. they avoid to put As the rooms uh, on there. One of our colleagues, uh, Oscar, has mm. made this uh, RetroPie game console at home, and he he somehow told me that it was something like he had he he has like a shared folder on his computer where this retro by downloads the, the games from it and then you can you can you, you can have like a menu with all the games and then you can just play one of those games yeah but right. can you buy those old games if you for example whatever pac-man i don't think you can buy the original game just like the just the software because it was more 
tied to the hardware, wasn't it? Okay, if we were talking like an arcade, uh, yeah. arcade machine, uh, I mean, or uh, even for consoles, yes, it's of course you need. But that's what the the emulators are for, and there's also uh, emulators for uh, arcade uh, machines. It's called the uh, Mame project, so you can mm-hmm. emulate uh, these arcade machines as well. I think it's also on um, a re- the RetroPie image. But uh, what I want to know is there is no legal way to buy old uh, games or like new old games. <laughs> you, you either can buy them uh, used or you can't, isn't it? There, there, there are some compilations uh, li- or y- y- you can buy like on PS3 they have uh, an arcade collection you uh-huh. can buy. It's like I don't know, 30, 40, 50 or classic arcade games. Okay. okay. On uh, or, or they also have uh, the Mega Drive collection. Then you can play a lot of Mega Drive classic. I see. I see. So, so there when are the companies still yeah, around. Can, they yeah, try to. Some of them do like that, so you can enjoy the old games still, and yeah. So it's, um, I mean, um, yes, they still want to be able to make money from the games if, if they want to in the future. So um, there's usually, I mean, the, the copyrights and everything still apply, but they're they're not chasing down individual mm. uh, homebrew or reproduction uh, people. But if the copyright basically like in music, like when the person who did it and plus 100 uh, dice and plus 100 years or something <laughs> um, <laughs> not sure actually <laughs> okay. i guess we'll see <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. no but but i mean the the fact that you can buy these uh, compilations that marcus mm. mentioned or the fact that you can download for your wii or digitally or uh, this uh what's it called good old games uh like um, the that indicates that the yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they were they're still making money from yeah. from the old and they games. They w- want to make it possible to. Yeah. But of course, there are there are I mean there are games that have been released as well, uh, so yeah. ab- abandoned yeah, or yeah. whatever you would call it. Do they port older games to to newer consoles? Still, or is it like a, a, it's not done, or is it more like the emulation with the like with the Wii? What they are doing? Uh, I think they. they I, I don't know how that's implemented, but I, I'm guessing that's uh, just a set of emulators as yeah, well. Just I guess. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But they also make, uh, I mean, uh, for instance, uh, a couple of years ago, they released uh, Mega Man um, uh, 9 and 10, was it? Mm. Uh, that were uh, released, they they were um, created in modern time. They were created just a couple of years ago, but they were made to look exactly like the old mm-hmm. uh, games for the Nintendo Yeah, and, uh, and I think they released also DuckTales. In some way, uh, yeah, that, that Ducktales uh, the gold, gold cart, gold cart. Yeah, they. I don't know uh, how. What I, I think there there was uh, some competition where you could win. Um, it was just like a lotto, yeah. or mm. do you say? Yeah, yeah. lottery. Uh, yeah, a, a lottery when you. Uh, so uh, yeah, there were like ten thousand co copies maybe or something oh. uh, and, uh, <laughs> and they they have been really rare now and mm-hmm. expensive on the okay. collector scene and uh, yeah. so uh, I, I have heard about values of it, uh, the prices have, are really high mm. and on eBay they were yeah <laughs> they can go really high yeah. So. Yeah. okay cool so, so I was born in Poland in, in uh, during the communist uh, era. So we didn't have uh, that much access to like uh, computer games and stuff. Uh, and even when I moved to Germany when I was ten years old, it was. I mean, people had like a Commodore or an Amiga, but it was. It, it seems like uh, since I moved to Sweden. A lot more people talk about games 
and than than in any of those other, other countries. So why why is it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Uwe Bay, Stian. <laughs> um, no, it depends on what people you're around. Maybe no, I guess so. No, but still, we we actually we we um um the the Swedish distributor of Nintendo games uh it's called Barisala it's a company outside of Kungsbacka mm-hmm. maybe you've seen it when yeah. you uh, <laughs> go home the big Mario statue exactly yeah. so they um they were responsible for marketing and distributing uh, Nintendo games in uh, they started out in the late 70s but there were no Nintendo games by then but when mm-hmm. they started distributing Nintendo stuff in early 80s yeah and uh, they did a really good job they set up a like a, a club mm-hmm. where uh, uh, kids could join and they would get uh, an, like a newsletter and uh, they would get their nintendo club card mm, and uh, a lot of they really built up a community and they uh, uh, th- that grew quite big um so they, there were hundreds um hundred thousand members plus in that Jesus. i believe <laughs> do you know uh, how many uh, members there were uh, yeah in what range? no no uh, not actually quite. it it was a lot of people it, it, when you talk to other in in the same age almost everyone had that um member card Mm -hmm. (laughs) so yeah i think it was a lot of members Mm -hmm. and yeah it it, it was a cool community yeah so they really they really marketed the hell out of the uh, (laughs) the nintendo uh, console Uh, Uh, yeah and that then led to that every other game also was like more accessible to people because they already knew yeah a lot of kids uh, had a had a had video games at home so so I think when other consoles also arrived, they mm-hmm. already they were already familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. The, and I guess you guys also like the standard of living in the I guess seventies eighties was also quite high. So you could afford to buy your child uh, some mm-hmm. uh, console. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, most most friends they had like two or three games, and then yeah. you went to trade them in for some other games, yeah. and or you borrowed games from each other. And so, most of my friends, at least, they didn't have that many games, but mm-hmm. still, yeah, the afford to to buy a video game for your. Yeah, it it was pretty expensive uh, to buy new games, and uh, I remember that I. Uh, I I didn't have so much games, but I I, I could, uh, for example, Christmas or when I had birthday, I wished Mm -hmm. to have a new game. And uh, so you you didn't get new games very often. Okay. okay. So maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know, two, three times a year, maybe. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, um, but it it was cool because uh, you, I I remember that we... uh, um, traded games or we hired games okay. uh, between each other friends mm-hmm. uh, you could just uh, go home to a friend and uh, uh, just uh, what to say uh, trade uh, trade or, or share, g- share g- g- yeah. games okay. and mm-hmm. you can borrow it for a couple of days and then you yeah uh, I see. and there was also the, the concept of rental gaming rental games here so you mm-hmm. could go to the uh, like you would have rented a movie you could also at the same place uh, rent uh, a game or even a console so that was a, like a, i think um, a start for many yeah. kids that they eventually uh, convinced their parents <laughs> to let them rent this console yeah. and yeah and i guess that if you wanted a newer console and you couldn't afford it, then you could at least play it for a couple of days or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So in in other countries, so I was in Japan and their video games seemed also quite big. Uh, do you know about other countries? How like US or oh, I don't know <laughs> how 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 is the game uh, retro game industry or is it the industry uh, I guess it's or uh, like the hobby or yeah, the yeah. community yeah. I mean 
it's it's quite big in Europe, but um, in in Japan it's definitely uh, like an, there are so many stores and there are uh, yeah in Akihabara for instance there is like uh, there are still plenty of arcade arcades where yeah. you can go and play the old games uh, yeah yeah so um, um, and in the US uh, there are there's also a lot of uh arcades where you can go and play the the old classics so yeah. i guess mm. uh, europe is not uh, th- it's not that big yeah. uh, in that because sense here i haven't s- or are there like arcade uh, game shops where you can go and play some old arcade games here in sweden no uh, not really there are some uh, like a handful <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, some are at bars or cafes uh, I see, yeah. but um, there, uh, in Sweden there's a law regulating this so you actually have, you have to have a permit to in order to um, uh, put up a, a video game in a public space uh, okay. and that permit also it it costs money and mm-hmm. it's also a, a a process to get get it, uh, to okay. get it yeah it's sad because if you go back in 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 time there weren't that law uh-huh. uh, then uh, yeah almost everyone could uh, just uh, put a, an arcade machine or a pinball game in a cafe or in a bar or in a restaurant and you can yeah. f- you, you could find them everywhere in the 80s and then in the 90s so what happened I, actually i think the the law uh, it um it came about in uh, 1982 or something uh and it, it that did not by itself prohibit uh arcades but it made it a little bit more difficult to open up an arcade okay. and you're you're even not allowed to put up a uh, like a PlayStation on a um, in a restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, like one of these hamburger restaurants, um, Max. Mm-hmm. They, um, I believe, they were. Someone uh, reported them for having an Xbox uh, in the kids' corner oh, yeah. of the restaurant <laughs> because they did not have a oh, permit to have it. So it's it's silly. Uh, but but is the law for something else actually? And it just got like tangled into. So this they w- when they constructed the law, they uh, the reasoning behind it was that um, uh, games kept um, kids uh, from. Um, doing better stuff like playing soccer or whatever <laughs> and uh, and uh, the like arcades they were, were uh, suspicious environments that weren't good for kids so they so tried to regulate dark. it yeah exactly <laughs> sweaty dark loud yeah. <laughs> nerd cave <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah probably a lot of drugs and rock and roll and <laughs> yeah so that's the reasoning. Uh, but, but I mean, if you and the law is still the same. The law is from 1982, uh, uh, which is, I mean, it's a, it's a r- ridiculous law. Um, I'm not saying anything for or against uh, like uh, one arm bandits and uh, the, the, that kind of machines. But yeah, yeah. but these aren't uh, uh, in the eyes of the law. Uh, they are not considered to be the same. No. So this is actually another. Uh, uh, the the video games and also pinball machines uh, they have their own uh, definition and own section so it could quite easily just be removed uh, removed, in my opinion but so is some someone trying to work (laughs) or lobby for that or yes uh, (laughs) i myself (laughs) oh okay (laughs) for instance but no uh, there there is uh there's a couple of people uh, lobbying for that and uh, uh, we hope that there will be a change soon because it's yeah it's ridiculous yeah it kind of is but uh, does it look good or are you still far away from so there's i think there is it's up for debate um on a government level Mm mm-hmm and um, one proposal is that they um, uh, you still have to um, apply but mm-hmm. that it should not cost as much money I see, yeah. but uh, that's still ridiculous i mean we, you shouldn't even have to apply I in, mean, my, in my opinion has a, a much more powerful device in the pocket to exactly. play games so yeah and that doesn't uh, get 
kids for to do drugs, <laughs> uh, rock and roll, I mean, premarital I guess, sex. I guess back then people said, yeah, uh, if you're on the internet like a couple two hours a day, then you're addicted to the internet. Today everybody is on the internet twenty four hours, mm. and it's gotten normal. So I guess that's the kind of a, the same thing. We we see that it doesn't affect as as much as we thought it would. So yeah, yeah I think you're right. Yeah, I see you have a lot of stuff here, like uh, condensators and and your cables and stuff. So I guess you are repairing this those old games also. Um, yes, I, I, um, I want, for, for me, it's, uh, one big part of the hobby is to just, uh, modify or, um, either modify working stuff oh. or repairing <laughs> non-working stuff. Okay. So, but is it only for you or is it like for, for, for many people, a big part of the, of the fun? I think there's a lot of people that en- enjoy that, uh, for me, I enjoy that almost as much as playing the games. I I, I think I spend more time trying to fix the games than actually playing them. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Uh, I'm not interested at, at all <laughs> of the repairing the fix yeah, yeah. because I'm I haven't got the the skills or the interest. Uh, so mm. for me, is if I should compare it to something, it's I really like. Uh, the design of games mm-hmm. like I collect uh, handle games myself a lot what of handle games a handle game is uh, a game you a game console a small game console that you play in your hands like a game boy and st- yeah uh, uh, or, like, like a game boy mm-hmm. and uh, oh I remember those that was only one game with mm-hmm. a special yeah. design ah, yeah. m- m- maybe you can't call them consoles because yeah. the console is more uh, a machine where you can switch cartridges and uh, okay, different yeah. games. Uh, these handled, L- often LCD games, mm-hmm. are m- with a built-in game is more. Yeah, it's a handled game. Yeah, I, yeah. I should I would say totally forgot about them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> but they, they are st- they are still really cool. Yeah. I, I like them because of the different design of them and yeah. the colors, and it's uh, it's a uh, there are so many nice games so yeah yeah now that. now <laughs> i remember vividly I was playing this one game for like hours every day yeah. mm. <laughs> and i think and it was uh, just like <laughs> this lcd display had like four different uh it could move yeah or, exactly yeah, yeah and that what it is and it will do bleep, yeah bleep, they bleep, were pretty bleep, simple bleep, bleep. but uh, <laughs> pretty fun too uh, absolutely yeah I, I think a, a lot of people have uh, played like donkey kong on nintendo's game watch games mm-hmm. uh there were uh, 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 some different uh uh, sorts of them it was like uh, a widescreen Donkey Kong Junior game that was just one screen and there were a, a multi-screen game called Donkey Kong and it was also Donkey Kong 2 mm-hmm. and uh, yeah they made like uh, almost 60 different yeah, game uh, watch games N- N- Nintendo yeah Nintendo and there were a, lo- a lot of other companies making also yeah. LCD handle games usually uh, like clones yeah yeah they they, <laughs> they 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 are not really clones but uh, of course they took ins- inspiration from mm. nintendo and did their own game and released them uh, like bandai did it and another company called gakken and there, yeah there, there 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 was a lot of them making mm-hmm. their would own you, would you say that those games have uh, aged well uh, they are more, uh, yeah, yeah. They are pretty still fun uh, to play. Mm. Like I can enjoy to s- sit and play uh, Donkey Kong or Zelda or yeah, some of the Game Watch games. But mm. for me, it's more collecting them and uh, of nostalgic reasons. I guess they were also obviously much cheaper than a console where you could uh, play different games. Yeah, um, yeah, they 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 were cheaper to buy in the eighties yeah. uh, than uh, a cartridge game, mm. like uh, a new 
a Super Nintendo game could cost seven, eight hundred crowns, and the Game Watch games they cost like uh, between 150 to 300 crowns okay okay yeah so they were cheaper yeah okay. cool. also you could bring them to school uh, yeah playing, <laughs> playing during the break yeah yeah everyone a lot of people did that and you, you could put alarm in it um, and yeah <laughs> yeah so it did actually work as a watch yeah <laughs> you could have it <laughs> nice 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 <laughs> as a watch yeah. but i still would like to go back to the repairing stuff just uh, shortly so what is it you like about it because i guess those games are easier to understand than like new computers which are just like really small and you can't do, basically do anything with it is it is it that or what what is it the, I mean, the the thrill is to get something working that hasn't been working for a long, long time. Okay, so so you find something uh, like second hand somewhere. Someone tells you, "Yeah, I have this thing. It doesn't work. Do you want it?" And then you go there and buy it, or what? I I mean, I I buy working stuff too. Mm-hmm. But um, if there's something that I can get a little bit cheaper and I can have a make a project out of it, mm-hmm. uh, then uh, I really enjoy that. Behind me here, I have a, a couple of boxes full of um, arcade PCBs. What are PCBs? Arcade PCBs. So they're actually, well, I can't show the listeners anyway, <laughs> but uh, like really big uh, PCBs. It's only one game. Okay, okay. So it's a, it's like a, a card where, where the game is uh, physically on it or what? Uh, yes. So okay. for instance yeah. here. So it looks like uh, like five now more twenty Raspberry Pis <laughs> together. Yeah, <laughs> this this particular one is uh, it doesn't even have a processor, but this th- this one contains one game. Oh. this is one game, um, and um, so there's a, a lot of logic uh, on this one. It's a pre-processor <laughs> okay. uh, stuff, so this one does not have a processor. Uh, there's only logic gates like oh. TTLs, and um, hmm. and um, I I bought a couple of boxes full of these. Uh, so the the thing is, um, um, some the the people that worked with these that had arcades in restaurants and everything, uh, they could uh, switch out after a while they realized that it was expensive to buy the entire new machine yeah uh, like the pac-man here it's um, it's a it's called dedicated machine because yeah. it's uh, it's, it's uh, yeah. painted with pac-man uh, yeah, yeah. side art and everything uh, it's intended to play pac-man but you could actually you can convert it to a miss pac-man or a galaxian or something but then they made these generic cabinets so you mm-hmm. could really just uh, switch the marquee on top yeah. uh, and uh, switch the, uh, the the game itself and so all these are uh, arcade PCBs are that, that you see here they're like one game per PCB and I bought them as defective or untested and that has been fun to just to try to get them running and see what's on there yeah absolutely so so who sells the stuff or who who has it like lying around and at the attic or so, or what usually they come from someone who has been there were people that had i don't know what the english word is but like uh, the swedish one translates to exhibitor like someone who mm-hmm. had these and a lot of machines and put them on restaurants and then maintained them and oh, okay. uh, went yeah. around and yes. changed the games and they had some a big storage mm-hmm. uh, facility and uh, every now and then someone f- finds an old guy that used to have that and, okay. and buys up a lot of his stuff and uh, uh, and then distributes it uh, yeah okay cool. so this um this particular lot that i got from a guy in, uh, in north of Sweden who bought uh, a lot, like hundreds of PCBs, and most of them he could test and verify that they were working, okay. and he uh, sold them, pass, passed them along to a lot of different collectors. And then he, uh, in the end, he had like 50 or so left. <laughs> that okay, okay. He didn't really, he could, couldn't really get working, and I yeah. bought them cheap to as projects 
I selling then those which you get to work to Marcus? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Or or where do you base your your? No, games? I'm uh, myself. I'm not really into the arcade scene that much, like uh, Christopher. Okay. But uh, yeah, I, I had uh, an uh, uh, an arcade for uh, for the time. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, Neo Geo cabinet SN- uh, from SNK. They did a lot of um, arcade games in the early 90s or late 80s also, maybe. Okay. Um, so I had a cabinet for a, for a couple of years. And, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I can enjoy our arcade machines, but it's they are so fucking big. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to have uh, the space. And yeah. uh, I live pretty small. Yeah. In my apartment, and I, if I need to prior priority my collection, mm. the collection, I priority more uh, home consoles, handle games, and like uh, game, um, the, the different signs and uh, mm. other things. Yeah. So yeah. But where do you get them? Like on eBay, or how, where do you? Buy uh, them? Yeah. Yeah. After so many years now. Um, you learn how to get oh, games you can so you know people yeah who... yeah, yeah you you built up a pretty good network mm-hmm. with uh, collector friends and uh, you you're going to a lot of fairs oh. the, all your uh, all your family and relatives they know that you're looking for it <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, they, they yeah exactly. market. everyone <laughs> know about uh, the nerd interest i have so they tell me if they find some games, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, but still, you, uh, I'm, I'm looking a lot on also flea markets and mm-hmm. websites and uh, like eBay yeah. and other. So you find those uh, the, on the flea markets also, okay? Yeah, you can still do it. It's not like uh, before. Uh, if you just go back ten years, maybe or uh, there was more easy to get uh, to grab a, a, um, a good de- deal pick up games cheap mm-hmm. it's not that easy anymore because people are know about known about their value and mm-hmm. uh, it's easier uh, as a private seller to just uh, sell your games on the internet now and if you compare to yeah, f- yeah people are more 15 years ago people are more aware so yeah. they're, they're more aware of of pricing and what yeah. what's mm. rare, uh, and also, uh, as you say, it's is it's quite easy to sell on eBay, Tradera, and more more people have uh, yeah. been. Uh, it's so easy involved these days yeah. to just take a photo of something and put yeah. it on in on a mm. uh, on the site. So the prices are. I I have no idea actually, so that's why I'm asking. Yeah. So the prices for like if you have a game from the '90s, is the price now higher than it was when when you bought it new, or is it the same, or is it lower? It's a lot higher. It's I lot would higher. say, yeah, they have really um, uh, what do you say, uh, grown or yeah, they have r- raised, really increased yeah. in. Yeah, uh, really insane almost. Uh, be, but so, yeah. so let's say a game cost like fifty dollars in the nineties. What would it cost? Yeah, if it's still new. Uh, also, oh, so if it's in the package. Yeah, yeah. But, okay. Yeah, as uh, many other collector scene, it's oh. always if you have the item in better condition with uh, mm-hmm. like original packaging and uh, instructions and everything and in really good shape there are a higher value of it than uh, yes. just a uh, low cartridge that are um, <laughs> in bad yeah. condition yeah, yeah. but it, so. it's um, I, there are a lot of games from 70s 80s and 90s that can go for very cheap as well okay. but uh, so i mean there's all parts of the spectra but um, but yeah. uh, there are some games that go for insane amounts, and just like you say, it's has to be the mint in box uh, and the good condition. And mm-hmm. yeah, and some people think that uh, just because it's old, it's worth a lot. Mm-hmm. But that's not the reality. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, if it's so, rare, as I guess. Christopher said, it's a lot of like Atari cards that are not worth almost a- a- 
yeah. anything. Yeah. So it, it really depends on like if it if the game were selling good or bad. Mm. Like if a game sold bad, there are not so many copies of it yeah. uh, out in the yeah, on the market. Yeah. yeah, on the market, and then it it gets more collectible because yeah. it's so rare to find. Yeah. And it could be a really shit game, and it's <laughs> still uh, worth a lot of money because yeah. it's so it's few copies of okay. it uh, yeah, out. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, one good example of that is the um, s- uh, game stadium events for mm. uh, the Nintendo ent- Entertainment System. It's um, it's a sports game um, that was uh, later released with uh, a different title screen of, by a different company. So they mm-hmm. re-released it and the 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 other release isn't worth almost anything and the first release which is basically only a another version of the same game okay goes for insane amounts and uh, but I mean, if you say insane amounts is it like thousand dollar one million dollar or what is it uh, I would say uh, five figures in dollars at least okay uh, I'm not sure what the market price is uh, currently yeah, but five but, figures, uh, five figures <laughs> okay, uh, cool so that's a lot <laughs> yeah <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the most insane prices i've seen uh, it's uh, I, i'm not sure if it's exactly that game but for retro games uh, uh are uh, five or six figures uh, i don't know if the um, do you remember if that nintendo world championship card ever reached six figures i'm uh, not sure I but don't uh, remember, but it, i think it's still the game that have been sold yeah. the most expensive mm. So there are some uh, extreme yeah. amounts. Yeah. Uh, we usually do not see th- that extreme amounts here in Sweden, but okay. but uh, they're quite yeah. Uh, yeah, a, a lot of priced. games have raised in value just uh, the the last years. Okay. If you compare to just ten years back, maybe uh, mm-hmm. there were che- uh, it was easier to find complete. Uh, super NES games or uh, NES games or other mm. uh, game systems uh, pretty cheap um, but now nowadays I think the collectors have um, we are uh, a lot of more now uh, that are collecting than mm. for 10 years so and it's still just the same amount of games ah, in I the see. market okay, yeah. and that's a uh, that makes uh, it yeah more expensive. So how do you have a rough understanding how many people are in the in this community? There, there's like um, trading games. And, there, and uh, so. In Sweden, there's um, there's a Facebook. There are several Facebook groups for trading, uh, mm-hmm. but the biggest one it actually has. I, I think it reached uh, eleven thousand members, and that's just a Swedish group. Yeah. Oh, there are some other uh, people from other Scandinavian countries, but yeah. but. The, that has to be the largest uh, yeah, single, the l- largest, largest single community, community or, yeah. in Sweden. But then, uh, I mean, the, the, there's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> not uh, everybody is on Facebook. Uh, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, there are a lot of people that are collecting just uh, in their nerd cave, <laughs> in the dark nerd cave. Yeah. So and yeah, so the, it's. Yeah, I think it's more. And also, there are so yeah, many niches, and yeah. uh, there are, I mean, the international forums. There are so many forums, yeah. and many of them have thousands of members. Mm. But what what niche could 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 you come up with some niche which is a bit uh, smaller and weird? <laughs> I mean, Marcus uh, handheld games. That's uh, oh, yeah. that's a niche yeah, or. People that only collect uh, Swedish games, oh. uh, games developed in Sweden, yeah. or um, I don't know, people that uh, collect. Uh, I, I had a, a period <laughs> where I uh, bought a lot of uh, papers, and you did, you did that yeah. too. That's um, yeah, me too. Like Maybe. old, um, um, uh, what's it called? Like. Um, News newsletters or okay, yeah. Um, yeah. price lists or, or advertising uh, yeah. uh, in Swedish yeah, um, yeah. like flyers uh, that see, sort of thing from from the so is that, is that the no game not name. games but everything around the yeah game. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. and for myself I have 
always liked a lot of merchandise. Mm-hmm. I really like f- uh, items uh, around the games, uh, like figures or just... Uh, it, it can be almost everything. It can be pens, pencils or... Mm-hmm. Yeah, with just like the company name on it, like Nintendo or say Sega or other uh, companies. So there, you can collect a lot of uh, weird <laughs> stuff. Things, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's really fun. Yeah. I like to put them in the shelf around the games, and ah, yeah. I, I, it, yeah, lo- yeah. it looks cool and nice. I think absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Another common niche is to um, collect for one uh, series of games. Yeah. For instance, uh, like the Mega Man games. Yeah. And you, then you want all um, all Mega Man, Mega Man games released for all platforms, uh, or maybe Mario games or yeah. Sonic games, or mm. so that's also popular too. Yeah, and in Sweden there have been uh, a niche that have been really popular in uh, to just collect the Swedish released NES games. Mm-hmm. So are uh, those somehow special? Yeah, it's or? it's around two hundred, two hundred ten maybe. Uh, it yeah. It depends on how you count yeah, them, so but the, so they are they're marked with a region code that tells them tells okay. that it, it's not not necessarily that it's Swedish, but um, uh, SCN as f- stands for Scandinavia, so it has mm. it on the cartridge and on the box and on the manual. Uh, so but the manual it. and stuff was it translated to Swedish or yeah. was it still yes? Yeah, okay, it was. So um, and so that's a way to identify a, a game that was released here, and it's uh, very collector friendly because there's not a lot of them, but it yeah. still it takes a while, and. Mm. Um, so, two hundred plus something games, uh, and uh, very a lot of them are quite difficult to track down, or at least uh, like if you want to track them down cheap, mm-hmm. mm. and um, that makes it it's quite easy to get quite far mm-hmm. to get like seventy five percent, and then the last twenty five percent you have to are really expensive and yeah. hard to find. So. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's talk about uh, ret- retro spels messan, which is uh, yeah. What is it actually? Uh, could you s- explain? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a fair that uh, me, Christopher, and some other friends started. Uh, we we started planning it. Uh, I think it was two thousand nine. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, we uh, have we we have a. Uh, known each other uh, uh, on forum for many years and mm-hmm. uh, we were some friends living here in Göteborg, Gothenburg and around Gothenburg and we uh, had some yeah we, 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 we met often and just played games and mm-hmm. talked about games and then we started talking about to have uh, something some meetup or or a fair where people could come and just uh, as we uh, play games, buy games, trade games, uh, and uh, everything yeah. uh, we did in a bigger scale, yeah, like a know? convention or yeah. an expo or whatever it would translate to. But uh, yeah, and we we were actually inspired because there was. Um, um, event in uh, Stockholm at the time. In, uh, um, now it's no longer in Stockholm. It's in uh, Västerås mm. in Sweden, uh, called uh, Retro Gathering. Okay. And um, for those who, of you who don't know, Stockholm is on the other side of Sweden. So we wanted to have something on this uh, on the west, side, west coast. Side. Exactly. <laughs> so we wanted something on the something <laughs> similar on the west coast. So we didn't yeah. want. We were not. Um, we were not copying them in that sense. We we wanted to be a complement to that. Yeah, so yeah. They were on the fall, and we wanted to have something in the spring yeah. on the other side of Sweden. So there would be, yeah. And it's gotten quite big, as far as I understand. Yeah, we uh, we hadn't the f- the thoughts about that in the beginning. We just wanted to get started and to do something. Uh, so the first fair we did. Uh, it was a, a, a pretty small um, area, or um, yeah, the venue. Ceiling. The venue was for uh, I think a uh, hundred people or something was allowed. Yeah. Okay. Uh, hundred and fifty was yes. allowed in at the same time. <laughs> so yeah, and 
I think we just uh, would be happy if there was like 150 or 200 people coming. Yeah. But it was yeah, uh, then we could yeah. afford the rent. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Because we uh, used our own money and yeah. we didn't have any. Yeah, it was. So how many people were you? Doing I think this? it was between were 650 or 700 coming. Yeah, the the Correct. visitors. Yes, yeah. we were hoping for, like you said, somewhere around 100, 150 visitors to. Uh, but show that up. was not in the first venue because that was yeah, that, small. Yeah, that was for the first venue. We was hope we were hoping for like 100, 150 to break even, but uh, towards the end of the day, it turned out that we had had like 700 people. And it was a Jesus. long line. Yeah, the whole it was of a day. so long queue. And oh. the- <laughs> If you search on YouTube, you can see the queue. Oh my <laughs> if god! If you just yeah, yeah you search for retro spin. So that was for for the first venue already. Yeah, how, yeah, it was a success from the beginning. Jesus, <laughs> how did you advertise it, or was it like no, not on the really. forum, on the forums yeah, and uh, I, like flyers, yeah, posters. <laughs> I, I okay. think a lot of people talk to each other, yeah. mouth by mouth, uh, yeah. and you. We didn't have any econ- economy for uh, doing um, uh, advertising and that kind of thing. Yeah. So we spread it uh, word. Uh, I guess we participated maybe in a podcast or two. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> so a good way I to get the word out. <laughs> people, people just wanted to have something like that. Yeah, I think already, people so. were really curious about what we were doing and mm. uh, they wanted to go there to see what we, what it was and uh, and I guess it's yeah. also for for young and old because the 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 parents played those games and they want to show them to to the kids and yeah. they don't have it at home. Yeah, if you look like uh, the people are that are coming to the fairs there are a lot of big difference between the ages mm-hmm. uh, they are as you say the, the parents and their children and well, I'm, I'm happy to see that there have been so many like teenagers coming uh, that apparently haven't grown up with the, these games and yeah. it's a it's a retro retro video game fair so it's not uh, there are no modern games modern games are banned from the convention so is there a limit age wise yeah something? in the beginning we said I think we said that we the Dreamcast that. was the newest one allowed and then we have pushed that limit yeah, a little bit I, I think we, we said like something about it should be 15 years old or something like that I see to be uh, or if we said two generations back, yeah, or maybe. three generations. Back, I don't okay, know. okay. Yeah. Anyway, we so we um, it was a success, and we continued to arrange this. Mm-hmm. Uh, this has been like non-profit so like yearly or what? Yeah, yearly. Okay. And we have had a non-profit organization behind it with roughly ten people. Okay. Um, sometimes more, sometimes less people coming and going, mm-hmm. and we did the convention for six years. So uh, the the last one was in t- 2014. Mm-hmm. No, 2015. Oh, last year, yeah. Last year, and this year we have taken a break okay. from it, and just we, because it's too much work. Yeah, I mean the the last one it was almost 4,000 visitors, and that's in one day. So that's... it's grown from <laughs> the 600 yeah. six years back, and now. 4,000 people in a day and of course we've switched to a much larger venue but we still can't handle it. The the line is Mm. like hundreds and hundreds of meters long uh, to get in and people stand in line for hours still even though we have a much larger venue and... do you have to pay to go in, or how does it work? Yeah, there's an uh, entrance fee, uh, but it's we since we are non-profit, yeah. we can try to keep it as low as we can, so yeah. we still get some money in to to uh, hire guests, to speakers, yeah. or uh, buy in more consoles, or um, because we have our own. Our own con- the 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 organization has its own consoles and arcade games and uh, inventory in general. Oh, so you so you have it together as an organization, and you put. Yeah. Could you could you perhaps describe the how how like if I go in went in into the fair, what would I see basically? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so you. Would, you would see a lot of people. 
a, a, a quite large uh, it's it's a big convention hall mm-hmm. uh, i think the second biggest in uh, gothenburg okay. um it's called eriks Bergs Hallen. Uh, that's the place where we yes have this and um it's not a lot of small rooms it's like one big hall i see okay and uh, there are a lot of uh, exhibitors people that sell stuff or show something off maybe they uh, have done a homebrew game or something and they uh, do demo that or uh, people that make um, one thing that has been really grown really popular in, in uh, later years is uh, beads they can make these uh, with these small colored beads yeah uh, for characters from uh, the... like plastic beads that you put in a pattern and uh, oh i see okay a lot of people did that in like uh, pre- preschool or yeah, 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 uh, yeah. kindergarten <laughs> and uh, <laughs> okay so people selling uh, like art uh, oh, so retro games art yeah oh, i see <laughs> nice <laughs> so um, so what i can see here is mario as a woman uh what is he doing actually? Uh, he's, uh, it's it's a piece he? of fabric with uh, some old traditional, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the setting here is it's four ladies that are doing laundry or something, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Uh, someone attached Mario's head to all of <laughs> all of the nice, the bodies. Nice. Interesting. So there's a lot of exhibitors. Yeah, and then there's the um, there's um. Uh, an area where you uh, compete where mm-hmm. we have competitions like uh, Swedish championships of Super Mario Bros oh, so you pl- play the game or what yeah so people can compete and it's like a huge oh. uh, we have it on a, like a big projector okay. screen and uh, when the, the final is the oh. It's actually there's the crowd is huge just to watch the finals it's like esports yeah on a yeah. really big screen <laughs> yeah and yeah, we had like private collections showing showing up and uh, um, speed runs. Yep. And uh, and quite a big demo room where we where you could try out all of our consoles and uh, arcade games and pinballs. So, so and everything is actually working, and you can try it. Yeah. Ah, I see. And those traders who, who trade uh, or yeah sell stuff. Are they also selling like the those arcade stuff and so on, or is it more like TV sets, games, or the, or is it the arcade? <laughs> the arcade stuff is not that common. Uh, okay. We've had a couple of sellers that have sold uh, arcade games yeah. or parts, but usually the most popular uh, games are the Nintendo games, definitely. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah, but also merchandise like iPhone uh, b- b- cases, b- cases yeah, yeah. with the re- retro uh, yeah. new stuff, but with retro touch and uh, I see. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and we've had um, like uh, speakers, uh, guest guest speakers mm-hmm. uh, that have talked about something. So like a keynote yeah. style. We had uh, the voice of Mario. <laughs> oh. It's a guy from um, from uh, San Francisco, I think. Uh-huh. From uh, he made so the, the voice guy of who Mario. Said, it's me, Mario. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> cool. He did the voice for um, Mario sixty four, and he has been doing the voice for all the Mario games since, since then, I think. Okay. So he's uh, yeah, we flew him over, and uh, <laughs> he talked, and then he was sitting uh, at the table and signing. Uh, games with his autograph. Very cool. <laughs> Charles, uh, his name is uh, Charles Martinet. Okay. I think he, he does some games for uh, some voices for uh, Skyrim too. Okay. Is he like uh, Italian American? <laughs> no, I think that was just a voice <laughs> he <laughs> <Okay>. made. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm not sure. No, I, I think he's just American, but yeah. he did the voice uh, good enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice, nice. So I. I don't know if if you already know if you will start uh, this again or is it like just pausing for now. Um, officially, we we haven't. Um, uh, what we have stated officially is that we will not make a decision yet, okay. uh, because we wanted to take this year off and really, because we were quite tired and uh, we didn't want to make. Uh, a decision uh, too early and uh, when we were tired we wanted to recharge our batteries and uh, we are still doing that so yeah. uh, there is no 
uh, deci- decision yet, but so there's still hope. <laughs> yeah, I um, no, but um, I think something at least will happen during the spring in Gothenburg next year. Very cool. Very cool. So if some listener wants to go into this uh, this whole retro game thing where would you say they should start um uh, yeah there there are a lot of forums or communities uh, that could you name some yeah we have uh, some big here in sweden some of the biggest are uh, a nintendo community called sndb.se mm-hmm. um the community have have been um it's been around for yeah uh, 10 10 years yeah at least i think no uh, yeah the the 10 year anniversary was yeah, uh, a couple of just a year s- back or so yeah that is celebrated uh, yeah but that's a good community with a lot uh, of people knowing everything <laughs> Mo- mostly in uh, swedish though so if you mm. if um if you're into nintendo games i would recommend nintendoage.com that's mm-hmm. the biggest international forum what you really should do if you want to get into the hobby is you should go up into your attic and dig out your old games okay start there and depending on what games you have, if you had a sega yeah. you will probably feel nostalgic about sega games yes. so then there's the daughter site of nintendo age which is called sega age <laughs> <laughs> yeah. or yeah so but start by digging out your old. Yeah, stuff. or maybe write a list if you have uh, sold them. You can write a list of the games you had when you grow uh, growing up, and maybe buy them back, uh, okay, so. and maybe see if, if yeah, if you get uh, what do you say uh, uh, the spirit or <laughs> to yeah. collect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's uh, on the on the forums. There's usually uh, like a marketplace. Too, so it's not only yeah. on eBay or so. There's usually a marketplace section, and uh, it usually starts out with you wanting to buy back the games you had when you were a kid. Yeah, and once you have them, you start wanting More. the game, the game, <laughs> the games that you wanted as a kid oh, but never yeah. got. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then it just continues, and then, uh, and then, yeah, and then yeah. it's just a slippery slope down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So when I was about twelve years old or something, my father wanted to buy me a computer because my cousin had one. He had an Amiga five hundred. So I asked him, uh, "Will you help me setting it up and showing me how this?" stuff works and he's sure if it's the same computer then no problem if it's something different then I, I probably won't be able to to show you so we went to the store and the the salesman showed us around and he showed us the new version of the amiga 500 the amiga 500 plus which was apparently much better and it has had more stuff in it so my father was sold to, immediately so and he he and the salesman tried to convince me this is the computer you really want to have so, and i said yeah but it's not the same as my cousin has he has an amiga 500 and this is our amiga 500 plus yeah but it has much more stuff in it so so you really want this one and i told my father either we buy the same one as my cousin has or don't buy anything because I won't be able to use it. So it's wasted money. It sounds like a very mature thing to say. <laughs> How old were you? <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, I convinced them that I really need this Amiga 500 and I don't need this 500 plus. So we bought it. And then I started reading those magazines. Back then, you you wouldn't get online and read about stuff. You would buy like an Amiga magazine or a PC magazine. So I, the, in Germany, they had this Amiga. Uh, it, the magazine was called Amiga. And then you could like, you, you got a diskette with some freeware uh, stuff. And yep. you had get, uh, 
you could read about games and and and, and stuff. The, the the licensing model, I believe, was shareware. Shareware, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yep. laughs> so so I started reading up on the hardware and what what's all about. What is this five hundred plus thingy? And then I realized I had made a huge mistake because yeah, obviously the five hundred plus had already doubled the RAM, and you've been able to to double that also so you got two megabytes of ram and and my amiga 500 plus i only could have one <laughs> megabyte full but could you get some help from your cousin <laughs> i could but that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> so this is this is what i really like about the the hobby and uh, i think it the same goes for a lot of hobbies uh, it people really, most people have a lot of have, has some um, uh, relationship to games, and um, it might sound a bit nerdy to collect video games. But when I have people over, people that are not game and mm. gaming enthusiasts at all, they yeah. still they can can come into the room and they're like, "Wow, oh, do you have that game? <laughs> I had that when I was a little kid." Mm. And then yeah. they go on and they are be- yeah. becoming all nostalgic. And everything. <laughs> so, do you remember your first console? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, uh, it, I, w- I was six or seven years old, and uh, it was soon my birthday, and I had wished uh, just one thing. It was I wanted a Nintendo and nothing else. <laughs> and uh, 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 yeah, the day came and um, it was really early in the morning and my family uh, sh- showed up in the room and they sing happy birthday to you and there was a cake with lights and everything and uh, and a really big package. So I really hoped, uh, I hold my thumbs and I really <laughs> hoped that it should be a Nintendo mm-hmm. and I wrapped it up so fast and uh yeah and it was the nintendo so yeah. i was so yeah so yeah, i was so so happy and it was like the this uh, video on youtube when the nintendo 64 guy and yeah. his sister that are uh, oh, yeah, yeah. getting a, a, a nintendo 64 in and it it is christmas and yeah they are so insanely happy and yeah, uh, yeah. It, <laughs> it was you yeah not really that much but uh, almost <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and uh, it was just a normal day and i were going to school okay. and i couldn't think of anything else about uh, but that nintendo yeah. that day so i just wanted to go home bis- <laughs> bicycle home and just to start plug it in and play so that was my first. Yeah. Um, if you haven't, yeah. if you don't know about the 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 YouTube clip that Marcus refers to here, yeah, you the should Nintendo really. 64 kid or something. It's a kid uh, that goes insane <laughs> when he opens his uh, uh, his uh, Christmas present and it contains a Nintendo 64. And yeah, it's like, really, f- yeah. <laughs> it's really fun. You you have to see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So we are coming to an end, but I want to hear your story also, Christopher. So a lot of my friends had uh, a Nintendo, of mm-hmm. course, and uh, some had Sega. Uh, here at home, we had um, a PC, a 386, uh, and my dad made sure that we there were some some games on it, so we used to play it. But I still wanted a console. And so when was it? Uh, beginning uh, of the 90s, something? Yeah, early, really early 90s. Um, so, we, uh, one of my best friends, he had a Sega Master System, mm-hmm. the 8 bit uh, console from Sega. So, it's oh, yeah. from the same era as the Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of my best friends had one of those. And so, I wanted one similarly to. Uh, <laughs> to my story, story. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and um, uh, and we went to this store a couple of months before cr- uh, Christmas, and I had saved up, and I think there was a deal with my parents, mm. uh, something like, uh, yeah, okay, so you can get the console for Christmas, but you, you if you save up for half of it, we okay. will get the other half, when, cool. something like that. But we went to the store, and uh, I saw this. The, I think it was a discount even, so mm-hmm. I could actually afford the Sega Master System. And I wanted to buy it, and my mom said, "But 
there's this new console coming up. <laughs> this uh, a sequel to the this console. Uh, don't you want that instead? Uh, wait for just a couple of more months, and you will get. A, yeah. And that was the Sega Mega Drive, of course. Yeah. So, <clears throat> and I said, no, my my friend has this. That I want it. <laughs> and uh, so I bought it, and I was really happy with it. Up until Christmas, <laughs> where my <laughs> when my friend called and uh, said that he had gotten the Mega Drive for Christmas. Oh, <laughs> no. Jesus! <laughs> but yeah, I I was happy with my Master System anyway, yeah. and I played it a lot, and uh, it it has a, a lot of good games, and uh, I still have it actually. Um, Do you play it sometimes or? or? Uh, it's a little bit hard to dig out, but it's oh, up, it's up there. <laughs> but uh, it's um, it's uh, um, among the consoles that I enjoy picking up and and playing a little bit. Okay. So yeah. yeah, I'm happy with my with my choice. It's cool that you had Sega because it, almost everyone had Nintendo mm. when they were growing up. So it was a lot of Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I, I think I, I I reasoned a little a bit <laughs> mature, just like you, Richard. <laughs> like if I wanted to play Nintendo, I, a lot of friends had it already, so I could uh, go okay. to their place. Uh, okay. But I still wanted to. I had some friends that had Sega, so yeah. I, and my best friends, so we could exchange games and and. Uh, like I actually, when I was twelve, it never crossed my mind that you could buy games for the Amiga, because everyone was just copying and. The, yeah. I thought that was how you get games. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> My dad was fa- actually um he he uh, didn't really like the I mean we had some shareware games yeah. but we all he, he liked to install the actual games. You uh, yeah. I would wish for PC games for some yeah. of my birthdays. So I see okay. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Okay, great. That was super fun actually. Yeah. Uh, thank you for <laughs> joining me and yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it was and fun. I, I hope we'll see each other once the next retro spiels <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, and uh, of course, in, international uh, retro game collectors or just enthusiasts are, of course, welcome. But uh, no date has been set and uh, sure. no decision has been made yet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.